In the previous video, we had examined the level 1 documents, the quality policy, the quality objectives and indicators and we also learned about the quality manual and in this video, we will examine how to make a quality manual for your laboratory. I hope you remember this picture from before. This, these are the level 1 documents the, which included the quality policy, the objectives and indicators and the quality manual. So, now we are going to talk in detail about quality manual. It is the apex manual of the lab and it is a road map for meeting the quality management system requirements. All documents in level 2 and 3 should be consistent with the quality manual. I hope you remember all those documents we talked about in level 2 and 3, the doing documents, capturing the activities documents, formats. So, all these should be consistent with what is said in the quality manual. We will explain this as we go along. This is a must for an ISO accreditation, you have to have the quality manual. ISO gives considerable flexibility in the creation of the manual and very important point is that all stakeholders should be involved in the preparation of the manual. And there is a document NABL 160, which is a free download document and it gives guidelines on the writing of quality manuals. This is a copy of NABL NABL 160 guide for preparing a quality manual. It is a free download document and this is very helpful in writing your laboratory quality manual. So, let us examine the ISO before we go into NABL 160. ISO in clause 4.2.2.2. Talks about quality manual and ISO says the laboratory shall establish and maintain a quality manual that includes the quality policy or make references to your quality policy, description of the scope of the quality management system, presentation of the organization and management structure of the laboratory and its place in the parent organization. A description of the roles and responsibilities of the laboratory management including the laboratory director and the quality manager. These are the two very key pe people in the laboratory for ensuring the compliance with this ensuring standard, international standard. A description of the structure and relationship of the documentation used in the quality management system the documented policies established for the quality management system and references to the manage, managerial and technical activities that support them. We will examine all these as we go further. The labo and it also says all laboratory staff shall have access to and be instructed on the use and application of the quality manual and the reference document. What does that mean? You do not write the quality manual and lock it up, it should be available for all your staff to read and understand. So, now we look at how NABL 160 talks about the requirements of a quality manual. So, it again re it reinstates what ISO says that there is no required structure or format for quality manual. However, any quality manual should convey accurately, completely and concisely the quality policy, the objective, address or reference to the next level of documentation, management responsibility to the laboratory. And it also says one of the methods for assuring that the subject matter is adequately addressed and located would be to align the sections of the quality manual to the elements of the ISO. I will explain it in further slides. NABL 160 also says the, 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 it, the quality manual should have these nine elements addressed in it. A title, authority under which it is issued, scope of the quality manual, amendment record of the manual, contents of the manual, references to other documents, definitions and abbreviations, distribution record, brief description of the laboratory management system. These are the general information pages that you would put in a quality manual as you start writing it. Let us see each of these introductory um, pages and how to make them uh, in, the, in your manual. First one. 
is the, the title page. And if you look at NABL 160 again, if you turn to your page number 13 here, this says this should be the title page. At the top of the page, this says the title page of the quality manual should normally contain the following. So, when you make your title page, you do not write this, you take it out, but your title page will look like this. You do not need to write this heading here, the quality manual of your lab's name and your lab's address and the issue number of the manual, issue date, copy number and the holder's name. These are the minimum requirements of your title page. If you go by this, you can very easily make the title page. And if you look at this here, this is the footer of NABL. Though this should not come in your document. This is the footer that NABL has created for this document NABL 160 and that should not get carried into your document. After your title page, you have the next page that is required is a release authorization. The release authorization means under whose authority is that quality manual issued. And this is technically the first page of the manual. Content pa the, the title page is not a numbered page. So, this page should technically talk about only this part. It, as in the uh, case of the title page, this heading, the, the, the description about the, con uh, the release authorization is NABL explaining how to do the release authorization page. And this is NABL's footer. You should avoid these two and your release authorization page will only be this much. And if you look at this, you will see that uh, the details of it, you have to write the quality manual is released under the authority and you write, you write the name and designation of the head of the institution and is a property of you write the name of the laboratory and the address and you put the signature, the name and designation here. See, so this is authority under which the, the quality manual is issued and from this page onwards, it is important that you put a footer into the manual. So, how do you put a, how to put a footer, we will explain on uh, the video which will follow the, uh, at the end of this uh, series of videos on how to use uh, word files, how to make footer is a very easy process and you can insert it very easily. The footer should contain this many elements in it. I will we'll, explain the details of the footer in the next slide. Uh, so, it, it has to capture a certain amount of uh, information and uh, it is very important uh, for for every document, not just quality manual, but in this case, we are just talking about the quality manual right now. This is the information the footer should carry, the name of the laboratory, document number, document name, issue number, issue date and amendment number and amendment date. The difference between issue and amendment are, amendment is a small change. You may not want to reissue the document because you made one small change. So, instead of changing the issue, you will just make a note of uh, what amendment has been made. I will talk about this in a little bit. And issue is when there are a large number of amendments and you have to change the issue and you have to make a new book. That is when you make a reissue. And the second uh, thing is copy number and section number. So, these two are again related. You may be issuing three to four copies at one point of time because you may want to have one with the head of the institution or uh, in the case of a college, one with the principal, one with the dean or the medical superintendent. The HOD will certainly have a copy. Quality manager should have a copy. So, there are like four or five copies required in a medium laboratory. Again, section number is if you are making co common quality manual for the entire uh, uh, medical college laboratory uh, departments, you may want to have one in the biochemistry section, you may want to have one in the bio microbiology section, pathology section. So, the section numbers again to be noted down here, prepared by 
Generally, the quality manual is prepared by the quality manager and then it is approved by one of the technical supervisory staff and issued certainly has to be certainly by the upper management, the higher management, maybe your principal or your dean or whoever is taking the responsibility for the whatever is stated in the quality manual. So, that is the meaning of all these controlling elements. We will talk more about this in the document control because these are all part of the controlling of documents. Name of the laboratories to start with is the most important thing. And so, the after your release authorization comes your amendment page. This is your amendment page. Again, like what I said earlier, it is just this part that has to be we put into your quality manual. This is NABL is written about what is an amendment page and this is NABL's footer. This should be avoided. Ta take this and put it into your quality manual and amendments. This is uh, affording giving the 10 amendments. You can make 10 amendments and you have to write which page the amendment has been made on. You have to write the section, the clause, para, line, etc. and the date of amendment amendment made, what is the nature of amendment, why, why did you make that, the reason for amendment, why was that made and also signature and that page again now will become in the footer your page number 2. Suppose you have a, a quality manual of 100 pages length, so it will be 2 of 100 and so this is your amendment page. This is the third thing that NABL wants you to put into your quality manual and the next is your content page. The content page is like the index page of any book that you would ever look at. So, it contains again the same pattern, it goes by the same pattern and ABL's description of the contents. This is the actually how the content page should look, look like and it is an ABL's footer, this should go, this should go, this is your content page. And while you are writing your content page, you, you are going to now go back and write whatever you have put in, your page, title page does not count as I said earlier. Your quality manual release authorization we know is page 1, it's page 2 is your amendment page. If you have 3 or 4 pages of amendments that that will be 3, 4, 5 whatever it is. Then the content page which is the current page that you are on is your content page and then you come to the scope references. We will talk about each later on. So, at, at this point and this part of it is just the introductory section. Up until here is your introductory section. And then you talk about your management requirements and your technical requirements. We have just put two lines indicative of this, but you have to list out every number from 4.1, 4.2 to 4.15. There are 15 management requirements and there are 10 technical requirements. So, this will be 15 rows here, there will be 10 rows here stating each requirement and the corresponding page. And at the, at the end of it, you have to talk about the list of uh, documents maintained by the laboratory, records, formats. But here, this, is, this can be held separately also. It is not a must that it should be part of the quality manual. It's, it is a wish of the lab. If you want to put it into the quality manual, it is fine. Otherwise, it can be held as a master list or a master log. It is your wish. And, uh, ad, and finally, the annexures. Annexures are very good in a, in a quality manual. We will talk about the common annexures that people put in the, it, at, the, uh, at the end of this uh, session. And so, this is the content page. Again, the footer is a must. Footer here is, if, if, the, if the number here is page number 4, it will reflect here also as page number 4. I hope you understand the concept of footers. Uh, it is much easier to do the document control on um, computerized formats. Instead of, you know, many people even now hold quality manual in, uh, in manual uh, formats, but it is really difficult, especially when you want, want to make amendments and to reissue, you have to write the whole thing all over again and it is very much easier to do it on computerized uh, formats. So, the content page is over, we will go to the next one is your distribution list. So, this is a distribution list page, this distribution list same pr principles do not do take this part, do not take this part, use only this part in your quality manual and what is a distribution list as we said earlier documents uh, quality manual may be multiple copies. So, you have to identify and understand where each copy has gone and who is the 
holder of each of these copies. So, if I am I am just let us make a list copy number control copy number 1 may be with the dean control copy number 2 the principal control copy number 3 this medical superintendent 4, 5, 6, 7. So, you will write suppose this is a copy number 6 you will write copy number 6 and who is the holder may be the quality manager. So, you will know who, who holds which copy that is the meaning of the distribution list and it is a very important part of your document control system because you have multiple copies. Whenever you amend you have to make sure that every copy is amended that amendment is included in all the copies. So, this is a very important part of your document sy control system wherever mul documents are issued in multiple copies you have to have a distribution list and quality manual is one of the examples where you have to have a distribution list because multiple copies are there and you have to know that every copy carries the same amendment uh, wherever it is located. So, therefore, it is extremely important to have this distribution list. The next this is a exa sample example of a distribution list this may be a small lab there are only two copies one is with the quality man manager and one is with the with the HOD which is fine that is how small, small labs work in a district hospital lab this will be more than enough to have one with the quality manager and one with the lab in charge or one more may be with the medical superintendent and that, that should be enough. So, you need to identify where your copies are going. And after that is a description of the laboratory's QMS that is again a requirement of the NABL 160 that you have a description of the lab QMS. You can write it whichever way you want it is your prerogative to write it and uh, th this particular one says this quality manual contains description of the QMS of whatever lab and intends to demonstrate the compliance of the system to the ISO and to NABL and the, the contents have been approved by whoever it is and the document control system provides for upgrading and you can write whatever you want the, the key elements of your quality system can be put in into the uh, brief, descript, brief description of the laboratory quality management system. So, we have now talked about the title page. Uh, I hope you understood that and we talked about the authority under which it is issued. We did not talk about the scope yet, we will come to that in a little bit. Amendment record of the manual, then we talked about the contents, we talked about, uh, we did not talk about the references to other document, we did not talk yet about the definitions, we did not talk about, we talked about the distribution record and the brief description of the QMS of the laboratory. And now the next one is the scope. Whatever you are putting under the quality management system should be reflected though technically here only the analytical part has been described as the five divisions of the laboratory which has been brought under the quality management system. And uh, QMS is comprehensive we already know about that it cannot be restricted to the analytical part the pre analyticals and the post analyticals are automatically drawn in. And the, this is the next one that we have to talk about the references to other documents. Here technically what we are talking about is the documents at an upper level whom we, what you have uh, drawn from while you were writing your quality manual. This is an example and this lab is saying whatever the documents that you have referred to ISO standard itself 9001, NABL 112, multiple NABL documents have been consulted in the writing of this manual and that has been uh, addressed uh, in the uh, references page. That is only a sample, but whatever you are referring to is what you would write and definitions, whatever you want to call it definitions, terms and definitions or glossary or whatever it is. These are four terms which everybody may not be familiar with and generally what people do is they go by the ISO's clause number 3. ISO clause number 3 is the terms and definitions that the standard itself provides. The terms and definitions the standard itself provides many of which are referred to in your quality manual which is fine. You are talking about these and your, your technicians the people in your lab may not know these things. So, it is fine that you put these in your definitions, but that is not enough because you may have specific things that you are writing in your manual something which is very very specific to your uh, system your laboratory system that also should be referred to because when we, one of the reasons why this has to be written is there is something called adequacy audit which happens at the beginning of your NABL application. Your quality manual will be sent to 
the lead assessor and the lead assessor will read through your quality manual and he has to understand all those things you have described. He will, he or she will automatically understand the ISO definitions because the assessors are familiar with the ISO definitions. But there are certain things which you may, which will be very specific for your, your system that while that assessor is reading, he may, he or she may not understand unless you say what it is in your definitions page. So, apart from and in addition to the terms and definitions that you are using from the ISO itself, please make sure that you are including other terms which are unique to your situation. The definitions of that also should be included here. In this, the sample that we are showing, this only is doing the standard definitions in given by ISO for accreditation, alert interval and it is generally the glossary or the definitions has to be in the alphabetical order. So, that this whoever wants to understand more about it will find it easy to search that word from the from your uh, definitions page. Make it comprehensive, whatever it, you feel somebody alien to your situation will not understand should be defined comprehensively in your definitions page. So, we have talked about the definitions page. The next is the abbreviations. Definitions and abbreviations are together. So, just after the de definitions, you can bring in the abbreviations. Some abbreviations are familiar, some are not familiar, but regardless of that, whichever abbreviation you are using in your manual should be reflected in your abbreviations page. Again, in the alphabetic order, there are very easy mechanisms of actually arranging these in abbreviations uh, in alphabetic order. We will demonstrate those to you in the uh, video on using the word file. And after that abbreviations page, you can do something called introduction to quality manual. If you look at NABL 160, page number 10, there is an entity called introduction. Introduction, page number 10, introduction to the quality manual. Because people who are taking your quality manual should know how to read through it. This is an example of one of those things. This is an issue history. This lab has put something called issue history. If you look at that, there are seven issues which are happening. It is starting in 2009 and 2014. Over a period of five years, there are seven issues. So, there should be some reason why repeated issues have been made. You would not expect so many issues. So, you need to explain to the person who is looking at your quality manual, evaluating your quality manual, how so many issues came out. You are writing this first issue, reason for the, re it was the first issue and then at the adequacy audit there were more than 20 amendments. So, there was a second issue which was brought out immediately thereafter, November 2009 followed by January 2010, one more issue. And again in three months, one more issue because pre-audit, again amendments. So, multiple reasons for multiple issues and these should be clearly indicated somewhere in your quality manual. Otherwise, the person who is evaluating your quality manual will find it difficult to understand why so many issues have uh, been brought out. And again, one more example. Instructions for use of a quality manual. This laboratory is actually dividing the quality manual into different sections and it is explaining under section 1 you may find this, under section 2 you may find something else. So, it becomes easy for the person who is evaluating to understand how you have written your quality manual. So, that is again NABL 160 says that make provision for that and do that. And now, once you have covered that, after all your introductory pages are over, you write your quality policy. We already have talked about the quality policy, your quality policy will come here just after your introductory pages and it is followed by quality objectives. These are clauses that come under 4.2 of the management requirements, but it is preferred if it is written along just after the introductory pages. That makes it easier for the person who is reading to just understand your policies before he or she actually looks into the details of your quality system. And at this point, you have to stop following NABL 160. This is a guide to prepare the quality manual. At this point, you need to remember one thing, NABL 15189, the laboratory standard has been derived from two standards, ISO 9001 and ISO 17025. And at this point, after the introductory pages, the 160 is 
now directing the writers of 17025 and it is no longer relevant for 15189. So, you, we have to stop following 160 after the introductory pages and so there should be some mechanism of writing the rest of the manual as we have seen in the index page we have only come thus far, we have only come up until here. We have not gone beyond, beyond that. So, how will you write the management requirements and how will you write the technical requirements because the guide here does not guide you beyond the introductory pages. So, you are going into the uh, rest of the manual. What you would do is at this point you will take hold of your ISO and you start from clause 4.1 onwards. You have to align your quality manual to ISO 15189. So, you take hold of your uh, the ISO and start from 4.1 onwards. So, the remaining sections of the quality manual should describe all elements of 15189. These descript the descriptions of these sections in the quality manual should be in a, in a sequence similar to that of the standard. Other sequencing and cross referencing will be as appropriate to the laboratory is acceptable. So, I hope you understood this concept and we will now start writing the quality manual. So, we have now taken clause 4.1. For clause 4 is management requirements. 4.1 organization and management responsibility, 4.1.1 organization, 4.1.1 general, 4.1.2 legal identity, it just flows in that order. You take things one by one. So, under 4.1.1, you will write whatever your lab's name is, meets the requirements of this standard when carrying out work in its facilities, including its main lab and collection centers, whatever you want to say about the general, you read the clause, understand the clause and you say whatever the clause is demanding, I am doing. That is what the management is required to do. Writing is easy because it is mostly you can just paraphrase what the standard says. Understanding is more vital. You, you are making a commitment. That is what is very important to understand. It, through the quality manual, the management is making a commitment, a statement that I am following 4.1, I am following 4.1.1, I am following 4.2. Whatever clause the standard is asking me to do, I am doing. That is a commitment that the, uh, the, the quality manual is doing. So, whenever you are writing a clause, writing is very easy. Do not just do copy paste because that becomes a very easy way out of the whole uh, problem of writing the quality manual. Understand each clause if there is some, something specific you need to say about it, be specific about it. But generally you can make the statement that you are doing it, but stay committed to that statement that you are making. So, this if you look at the thing, one of the methods for of assuring that the subject matter is adequately addressed and located uh, would be to align the sections of the quality manual to the elements of the ISO 15189. I hope you understand. You take each clause, you write it down. If there are something specific that you need to write about what you are doing, do that. Otherwise, understand the clause, the conditional, it is something of a commitment that you are making and then you write that down and this has to be done. Though the we have already said the preparation of the quality manual is done by the quality manager, but the quality manager has to take the consensus of the management before each clause is written down because it is ultimately the responsibility lies with the management to make sure whatever you are stating is correct. So, after 4.1, you so when you at the end of it, if you remember, you have to uh, address or reference to the next level of documentation is a very important part of your quality manual. So, this is you have talked about multiple elements. One of the requirements is you have to say what are your level 2, level 3 documents. You, you are saying you are doing this. So, I am going to talk about 4.1 the management already said I am going to make sure that all entire 4.1 is done and done well and so therefore you have to now say what are the documents you would keep 
as an evidence of doing 4.1. So, if you are looking at 4.1, there are multiple clauses. If you 4.1.1 to 4.1.27, there are 13 sub clauses, each of which may require supporting documents if level 2 and level 3. If they are uh, like for instance, the communication 4.1.2.6 talks about communication and in that the management is saying I am having to have uh, records of my meetings, panic value communication, email, handover registers, records, whatever you may keep as evidence for fulfilling 4.1 should be held as records. Again, reference documents, if you have a QSP or an SOP, you have to write. This is just a format how you can do the reference document at the lower level, level 2 and level 3. You can do whichever format you want to, but make sure that you have everything referenced to at the end of each clause, each subclause or clause that is your call but make sure it is referenced to and it is very easily retrievable because if somebody is asking you prove that you are following 4.1.2.5, you immediately you will take whichever document that you have to show that and then you show it to them. So, that is the importance of uh, keeping the reference document. We will see more examples of this later on where uh, we can show proof of this one uh, of compliance. And similarly, I am skipping the other do other clauses and I am coming to some of the technical clauses. Uh, so, this technical clause 5.2 is your accommodation and environment. Again, you follow the same pattern, you state what you are doing and then you show the reference at the end of it. 5.3, reagents and equipment. So, you just say the same thing again, 4.3, 5.3, what are the equipment? You have the reference document, you have the record. So, at the end of each clause, you write what are your supporting documents in any kind of format. There are other ways in which you can do this. We will show this uh, um, uh, when we are talking about the level 2 and level 3 documents, uh, how to reference to the lower level of documents. So, but now we have talked uh, about making the quality manual, the body of the quality manual. I hope you understood how to do it. You have a section, introductory section where you talk about all those pages which you introduce as the manual to the reader and then you take the major clauses for and you all the sub clauses under it, state what you are doing for each of the clause, easily done by paraphrasing the standard but difficult to maintain it. So, please understand what you are writing because it is a statement, it is a commitment and understanding is very, very important and at the end of each of these clauses, uh, you are uh, saying what you are doing under these clauses, you put a list of references to your lower level of document. So, this is, I hope again you understand the difference between the referencing to the upper level of document that you talked about. Like this, this man, this quality manual that we are talking about was written uh, referencing to many documents, ISO and NABL documents. That is your documents that you are referring to while you are writing your quality manual. The other referencing that you are talking about is uh, uh, regarding the your level 2 and level 3 documents which support and give evidence to your uh, commitment of that particular clause. So, once we have written the entire quality manual, you go into the annexures. And why do you need annexures? Uh, it is for supporting information of any of the QMS processes. Generally, the processes are put, or put as annexure as flowcharts uh, or tables and how many is as many as you would want to, wherever you want to clarify each process, you generally is put as annexure. So, we are looking back at the uh, pyramid. So, we, we said you have done now writing the apex document, you, you have written the policy, you have written the objectives, you have written the quality manual and after that you have these processes which flow into procedures from the policies. So, these things generally are depicted as uh, flow charts at the end of the quality manual. So, this is again a reminder policies become processes, uh, procedures through processes. So, processes are again recap uh, steps involved in carrying out policies and it is it explains how a thing is done here. Activities, what are the basic activities carried out in your department? Can you explain to me, these are the questions that these will have, have answer. Can you explain to me your operations here? And that is what your, your processes will describe. 
the how your inputs will become inputs or resources will become outputs what information and resources do you need to start your work where does it come from outputs who receives the result of your work how do you know if you have done your job correctly or you are meeting your objectives so those are the uh, answers you will get if you are looking at your processes from beginning to end so this is an example of a process which is described this is on documentation documents itself so there are three headings review schedule level of document and medium and the status so they are saying level 1 quality manual they say review is once in a year medium is hard copy and status is control so similarly level 2 external documents why, when would you want to review it? When there is an addition change, is external documents, one of the most important textbooks. Textbooks, you would want to hold it only till the addition changes and when the addition changes, you will, you will change it. And then you are, it's of course hard copy, you may have soft copies also, but you, are, you know they are control documents because they are, all these doc, textbook also change, so it's technically they are documents that can be amended. Then level 2, QSPs, SOPs, all these things are reviewed once in a year. This is the laboratory's policy, that is being policy is becoming the pro procedure here and the entire thing is depicted as a process chart. So these are the, uh, these are ways in which you can depict your processes. Another process chart, process input output matrix, laboratory safety. So for what are the inputs that the lab is giving for safety? What are the processes and who, who is responsible? What is the output? What are the records maintained? And what are the quality objectives here? Everything can be depicted in one single table, whichever way you want to do it. So another example, communications. Communication processes, again, input, activity, and record. You can depict all these things as process, whichever makes it easier for your staff to understand. That is when you decide whether you want to put it as an annexure or not. And uh, one very important annexure, though it is part of your 4.1.2.5, is your organograms. That is something which all of you should uh, again learn to make, uh, how to make organograms to depict the authorities and the interrelationships, uh, to, to define them, document and communicate. It's very easy if you put it in an organogram about who is in charge and who reports to whom, what is the escalation matrix, if you have a problem, who do you go and tell, who is going to get uh, uh, resolution for that problem. So an escalation matrix organogram is a very important uh, uh, part of your quality manual. It is uh, mandated under 4.2.5. You can put it just while you are talking about it or you can put it as an annexure. Both are fine but it has to be there in the quality manual. It is something that uh, people will look at and while you are making organograms there are in, in the case of a government institution, certainly there will be two kinds of organograms. One is to define where your laboratory stands in reference with in reference to your entire management system, maybe district administration, maybe state administration, that is important. And second is within your institution, starting from your head of institution, maybe the principal or the medical superintendent to the uh, to the HOD and the quality manager, whatever that is, there will be generally two kinds of uh, organograms uh, required in a laboratory. Just showing one uh, small organogram, this is not comprehensive in that I am not the, the institutional head is not depicted here. You would want to start off with an institutional head, go on to the HOD, head of department. There will be quality managers, technical managers. The, under the HOD, there could be accounts. Maybe the accounts is under the, uh, not under the HOD. It may be under the institutional head. Whatever, whoever it is coming under, that is how you depict your organogram, like housekeeping. Uh, and uh, the accounts may be possibly not be under the HOD, it may be under the head of the institution. And if there are deputy quality manager, officers, technical technicians, residents, PG students, whatever, you understand the structure of your administration, especially with reference to the authorities. Whoever has authority over whom, so and wh however these people have a problem, who do they go to? to get resolution for it, everything will become very clear when you look at an organogram. This again is something which the, your uh, adequacy audit will look into and this is how you, uh, your lab will be assessed and your lab will be checked when you, they come for assessment because your organogram should say who is in charge 
at what point and who escalates what whom that all of those things should be very very clear clearly depicted in your organogram and at least two organograms will be required in government institutions one with reference to your um, uh, I said this earlier also with the, the, the where your institution is located within the government hierarchy and also where your lab is located within your institutional hierarchy both, both should be clearly depicted in your organogram. So that's about the quality manual and in the subsequent sections we'll uh, learn about the level 2 documentation. So to wrap up the level 1 I hope you remember about where we started with the quality policy objectives and indicators and the quality manual. Quality manual is a big document you have to spend time to make it and I hope you have understood what are the elements that you need to put under it the introductory pages and the management and the technical requirements uh, with the references and at the end of the document the annexures. So that is the level 1 documents. Thank you.